what is up, my dudes? I am just so happy to be able to come in today and be able to get my first real Eidolon video going. And I'm going to title this series How a Normal Guy Plays Legends of Eidolon. Because I am not even remotely as good as, you know, the main YouTube players. You got LPN, then you know Gandalf LaRue. You got Griffey Bit. Uh, sorry if I'm forgetting anybody else. But I am not good at this game. So I want to show you guys how a normal guy does it. It's not going to be flashy. It's not going to be, you know, 100 million damage. And in fact, I just hit, you know, 4.4 million damage. I'm wearing pretty budget gear. You know, I, I haven't even made the level 90 stat yet because I'm having an absolute terrible time trying to get the... See, this is how, this how bad at the game I am. The, the blue souls. I don't have the blue souls. So we're, we're trying. We got lucky with the Grand Moss Disguise and with Chiswar's Blanky, which I actually got lucky in 20-some uh, keys. I got two of these and one of the Obies. So the main thing I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get these two new rings. I just can't bring myself to, you know, go down to the dungeon and try and get in the party to get the, the Fleur Bows for that. But what I want to do in this video is just introduce all my different characters, uh, what they're all doing, and then I'm going to go into the stuff that I wish people would have told me when I first started playing. And I think that will be the most beneficial for you guys because I do see all the different YouTubers that play that. And a lot of them are pretty good at explaining what they do, how they got to where they're at. But my thing is just a little bit more in depth and breaking it down just absolutely dummy style for you guys without a whole lot of, you know, clipping, cutting, and editing. That way you guys see the game as it's being played. And, you know, I hopefully that gives more information for you guys breaking it down that style. So without further ado, I want to get into my characters. And I didn't, I didn't name them as well as I could have. Um, I did not know this was permanent. Most games, you're allowed to, you know, change your guys' names. Didn't know that. So when I first made my, my first character, almost all the names were taken. And I actually got so fucking upset. I, I named my first character all names. And then I kind of wanted to go on that trend, so I had all names. And then I made all name minor. Because this guy was supposed to be my first mining character. And he wasn't supposed to do anything else. And then... <laughs> You know, now I'm at three characters. I think you could have nine or ten at the time. I was like, well, I'm not going to know who the hell is who. So I named this one Archer. And then for some reason, I thought that this guy was going to be the main miner. And this guy was going to go be a badass out in the field. But that didn't happen. Uh, my maestro, which Prosperitus is, I believe, Latin for prosperity. Because he's got, you know, quote unquote, the luck. Uh, much AFK, because this is around the time where I started to realize you know, 99% of the time, you're not actually playing the game. Shooter, which he, he is hopefully, even though he's been stuck in the lab now for what seems like a freaking forever, he's going to end up becoming my green mushroom killer. But like I said, this account is very noobish. I am nowhere near the greats. This is, this is where you should be. I've been playing now for, I want to say, about three months. And I didn't start hitting 4 million damage until, you know, a day ago. And I believe a week ago, I was at 1 million damage. So I'm going to show you guys what I did and what I think made the biggest difference. And these guys are probably the only two, the names that I loved, Pots and Pots. Because he's, he's my uh, my main alchemy guy. And he's the one fighting right now. He's getting me that training and cooking. So I love his, I love his name. And I love Ocean's Eleven. So, I, you know, I think that's pretty cool. He's, he's my main fisher. He gets out there and gets it done. So I'm going to go through here, and I want to show you guys my, my lab mainframe, if you will. And if you guys are better than me, if you could drop down in a comment, this guy's getting astronomically more out, uh, lab experience than anybody else at 218 an hour. And I know that's not good, because I see some people with, like, getting 1,000-plus, you know, again, shout out to LPN, 1,000-plus alchemy experience a level, and that's just disgusting. That's where I want to be. But between the, I want to say, was it seven of them, I have been able to get all of my lab filled out. And for the most part, you know, it's working. And this will be a disclaimer for everybody. I did buy 
every week I do buy the two, you know, jewels, just because some of the requirements for these are absolutely disgusting. And as a, how would I say this? As a average player, realistically, not being able to get all that stuff. So a lot of my damage comes from this, but I do not think that this is the main thing to hunt down in the game. I absolutely do recommend, though, because I did get that recommendation on Reddit uh, about a month ago, is to push to level 4, which I agree with, and then get your guys in the lab. And I'm about 50-50 on how I, how I view that, because while it is true, a lot of my damage does come from the lab, a lot of the utility, it is kind of disheartening in a way, until you get to, you know, in the 70s on um, the lab, where... I can go from seven guys in the lab down to six, down to, I think I've seen it done in five or four, which I'm still quite a bit of ways off. Um, my Bubo, luckily he's given everybody else a little bit more of an extension, so it's, it's making it better. So I do agree, push to level four, and I'd have to say it's mainly for this one. Every 24 hours, your three lowest level alchemy bubbles gets plus one level. This only applies to bubbles level 5 or higher, so it's more like your lowest level bubble that is at least level 5. Also, it only works on the first 15 bubbles of each color. I would say that this is huge, especially if, like me, I didn't work on alchemy, and I'm way behind until I got to level 4. And that is my own mistake, because at the time I wasn't heavily invested in Reddit, so I didn't read how important alchemy was, and it's mainly a couple of skills. And I'll go over those in just a second. But no bubble left behind gives plus three levels instead of plus one, and does so for the lowest four bubbles instead of three. Between these two, they have done the most for my alchemy. And the best thing about it is, no matter how large the alchemy bubbles get, these are still going to give the lowest, what is it? Lowest four bubbles every single day. And that has just been the absolute biggest boom. And I'm going to get into stuff like cooking and where I'm at in breeding a little bit later. But like I said, this is just that over. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump on my second main. This guy does have his level 90 weapon. I'm actually pretty happy with it. And I got him to about 99% AFK game 3. But again, he only does about 2.6 million damage. I've been neglecting the orange side of alchemy. As opposed, I'm sorry, I've been neglecting orange as opposed to purple, trying to get my bonnet conjure as strong as possible. But for this first video, I don't want to make it too long, so I'm going to get down here real quick. I'm going to show you guys what you should be doing to make this as profitable as fast as possible. So for this, these are highly important. And no, I don't have any cost, nothing extra. I'm trying to, off the bat, get all the bubbles like I did over here. I finally got the last bubble for uh, the purple cult. So I'm trying to do that first, and now I'm going to come in, and I'm going to get um, the cost and the extra as well. But right now, since I've fully completed the purple one, I've got them off of here, and I'm trying to get a certain bubble in the yellow cult. So with that being said, things to focus on. The best piece of advice is I would have a quote-unquote main. For me, that is my Bubo. And that's why I spent so much time getting these up. And I know that comparatively, these are lower than other YouTubers or other players. But for me, this is pretty good, getting this up to level uh, 53. Second big one is Mage's Best. All right, That may only be at level 31, but these are both putting in absolute work for me. So pick which one is your best character. For me, that's my Bubonic Conjurer. And right here, so across the board, this one being called Maddie Stafford. Let me get out of that. This one being called Britney Spears. Oop, maybe down one. And this one being called Bo Jack. So if you look at it, all of them should be across level 30. So all these percent damage uh, multipliers by percent are added together. And this is where a huge bulk of my damage came from. When I was at 1 million damage, I had not leveled up any of these bubbles. So if you're a first-time player, or I'm sorry, a newer player, I would highly recommend pushing up to at least that ninth bubble. 
And then once you get there, around the same time you get to level uh, four, I'm sorry, to world four, I would have all three of these right here at level five. And if you're not a very active player, and please go down in the comments if you think this is a bad idea, but this is something I wish I would have done, is I would have got Britley Spears, Bo Jack, and Maddie Stafford to that uh, was level five. I'm sorry, to level five. That way I'm getting three extra levels every single day in those skills. And then I would also have done FMJ, which I'm actually going to level up again real quick. I would have got FMJ, and over here there should be Shakrissi. And what I would have done is got Shakrissi, FMJ, and those three damage bubbles to that level five. And then if you're still doing things in other worlds, like you're still really trying to progress in world three, X, Y, and Z. I would have gotten them to that level five, let them get their free levels. And by the time you're really ready to get into world four, and you're really thinking about pushing, those levels, or I'm sorry, those bubbles can be easily into the 30s, into the 40s. Or if you're a very inactive player and you really only come back to hit the weekly reset, which is every Wednesday at 3.15 for me because I live uh, CSP. So that is just what I would have done. This was by far the biggest damage multiplier for me, and this is something I recommend you guys push as fast as possible, and don't be like me. And also don't be like me in the sense that I didn't level up either any of these until I got to – I want to say the 8th, ninth, maybe in 10th bubble. Did not know these were a thing. So highly recommend getting in there and doing that. And the last one is the post office. So there are other players in the game that have you know upwards of 16,000 of these. Okay, I don't even have, I want to say, yeah, the 6th company unlocked. So this is good. I don't see a lot of damage from this. I would say the alchemy in the lab are far above and beyond better. But this was still a huge damage increase for me. So don't neglect it. You know, get yourself some silver pins. I'm only sitting at six right now. I had to use a lot of them to try and get uh, a down under the league that I actually have. So just to break it down for you guys, I don't want to go super in-depth in the first Eidolon video. I do have an idea of what I want to do with the Eidolon portion of my YouTube channel. And that's a more thorough, deeper understanding of the game mechanics. You know, some loot going over there, beating up Chiswar, beating up Amarok, things like that on Chaotic and eventually on Nightmare. Not there quite yet because, you know, my guy only has 11.3 accuracy. But that is something that I want to give to you guys in the future. But first, I want to break it down as much as I possibly can, starting at World 1. And then going into World 2, into World 3, and World 4. And I'd especially like to break it down by class so you guys can see, you know, what I messed up on my warrior, which was I was wondering why he was so terrible. And it's because I had never done Apocalypse Zap. So small things like that, that's what I'm going to get into. But just for the first video, I wanted to say hi. My name is Paul Murph Plays, and I'll be making a lot more idle on content. Unfortunately, a lot more people did request Elden Ring, so I'll be doing Elden Ring during the week, and then on the weekends, I'm going to jump on, I'm going to check out my progress on Eidolon, and then I'm going to push on from there. But I'll stop talking. I'll quit rambling. Hopefully, you guys have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your weekend. With that being said, Palmer Place, signing off.